Hello everyone and welcome to the game I promised, uh, the game I played yesterday from the Croatian Chess League. My opponent was a candidate master and uh, the game lasted some three and a half, maybe four hours. It was a really difficult one for me to calculate and uh, for those of you who maybe don't have the, the best tools on how to face Aljehin's defense, this game will, uh, you know, uh, show you a, a few fun variations that you can use uh, to... Uh, either equalize or crush your opponent. So let's check it out. Uh, uh, like I said, Aljekin's defense was on the board. Uh, e4, knight to f6, uh, e5, knight to d5, and I played uh, pawn to d4 and d6. He played. Uh, so uh, on the way over there, uh, in my uh, with my teammates in the car, I asked Yozarov uh, what does uh, he play on uh, against Aljekin's defense. Even though he's a d4 player, I, you know, just uh, I, I uh, w wanted to know what he would play said that he would go for the four pawns attack and while i also uh enjoyed playing the four pawns attack um uh when i was younger i don't like it anymore uh i got this book like maybe four or five years ago uh kasparov versus Simon palatnik where kasparov uh, completely obliterated him with knight to f3 and ever since i saw that game i decided that i will i will be playing the, the knight to f3 line here uh, as I did uh, in this game. But interestingly, I did not prepare for this game. I thought he would play Aljechen's defense because I already played against him once some 10 years ago and he played Aljechen's defense, so I thought, uh, why would he repeat it? And uh, if I just prepare Aljechen's defense, I mean, th there are so many openings he can play, it would be wasted preparation. So uh, I, I, I did not prepare at all. Uh, but, uh, you know, if I did, it'd be great because he did go for Aljechen's defense. So he played g6, I played bishop to c4, he played knight to b6, and I played bishop to b3. In that game, uh, Simon Palatnik played a5 against Kasparov, then uh, a4, and then bishop to g7. Uh, but here, uh, my opponent went for bishop to g7 right away. And now, Kasparov's idea, I thought about using Kasparov's idea from the Palatnik game. Uh, it's a really nice one, because he went for knight to g5 right away. Uh, he uh, attacked the f7 spawn, uh, so he can uh, play uh, f4 right away. For example, e6, and now f4. Uh, the problem is, um, it's not as great as it seems. D captures, e, uh, captures and now pawn to h6, because... Okay, the, the game is different from the Kasparov game without the, these two moves. I didn't. I have no idea if that's like uh, very important. Uh, but after uh, now, now I would basically have to decide whether to go back to f3, and then I actually like his position. He can play c5, knight to c6, or I go here, and then I allow his queen into the game. He nicely connects check with my knight. I have to go to g3, then comes c5. Let's say c3, knight to c6, and so on. I thought this would be very, very good for him. His entire board is developed and he's uh, the Aljechen player here, not me. Uh, so I thought he would have the upper hand here. So I prepared it. Knight B to D2. I want to play Knight to E4, just not right uh, right away. Uh, we, uh, castles, castles. I played. Uh, he played Pawn to E6. And now I played Queen to E2. Again, I could go for Knight to E4 right away and I really wanted to play this. I just didn't like uh, D captures on E5. Uh, but the problem is you can play this. He's never going to take away uh, with the bishop because uh, even though he can trade queens here, uh, the absence of the uh, dark square bishop will be, really be a problem for him now already. Bishop to g5 is coming, knight to f6 check is coming, so he really doesn't want to give up the dark square bishop. Uh, but okay, I didn't capture, nor should you. Queen to e2 is the best, and this is what I played, and now knight to c6. And here... I played rook to d1. Now here I thought about uh, uh, the position a lot because I could sacrifice a pawn uh, for the initiative, like I could go knight e4 and if he captures here, uh, he could grab my pawn here and then it could be very nice because I have all of these developing moves uh, like bishop to g5 attacks the queen, rook to d1. Uh, but uh, uh, let's say uh, bishop to g5, okay, the queen is attacked, pawn to f6, I can attack the queen, rook a to d1, queen to e7, I can go and go for bishop to h6. Uh, and uh, I like my position a lot. It's really a lot of um, uh, a lot of counterplay that I get. Uh, you could play some knights to g5 moves attacking the bishop. You could go after the after the knight here with something like c4. Uh, the the idea is basically that you're you're preventing black from developing and uh, you are having a great time at it. For example, if c5, you can even play knight captures on c5. The problem is uh, after this uh, knight to e4 move, he doesn't have to capture on e5 this way he can just play knight to d4 and here it's not so so clear for me if uh this is anything knight captures queen captures bishop captures on e5 now it's a little bit different and uh, although i do get the dark squares i can play bishop g5 f6 uh it does seem to be a bit more manageable for him rook a to d1 he can play queen d7 uh and okay it's it's maybe a position you can play i'm up a piece i'm up a pawn 
but uh, sorry, he's up a pawn, but I don't really have all that much counterplay. Maybe I do, I just couldn't figure it out over the board. So I played rook to d1. Uh, Dijon says that rook to d1 is a very nice move, so I'm very happy with that. And he uh, here I was expecting uh, kind of d5, maybe he stops my knight from going to e4, and then uh, once he blocks the center, then I play c3, bishop to c2. But he didn't. He wanted to sort of exploit the idea that I didn't play c3, and uh, he went after my light square bishop. And okay. It's a very strong bishop, but I also like the d4 square for my knight, so I was very happy with this. Pawn to h6, he doesn't want to allow bishop to g5, of course, as he shouldn't, uh, then uh, knight to f6. And uh, now there are a couple of moves uh, I could play. Uh, the engine says you should play bishop to d2 here, but it's uh, such a weird move, and I never even considered playing bishop to d2 here. Uh, point is that uh, he, he will capture, you will get the semi-open a file, and it's just a very nice developing move. I went for knight to f6 check. Uh, I thought, I, I felt like I had to, you know, make something happen here. Uh, and my idea was that uh, if he captures, he's going to give up his dark square bishop. I'm also going to capture on h6, for example, captures, captures. And now if he captures with the queen, I'm going to capture on h6, attack his rook. Uh, he will probably trade once, move his rook somewhere, uh, and then I'm going to uh, create this um, very strong center with c4. And, okay, I like my position. I control the dark squares here. I'm the one that's going to be controlling them in the future so you know very nice and uh, on the other hand if he tries something like king h7 to defend the h6 pawn and then to go after this i have queen to d2 and i'm just gonna win the game on the spot here uh, so he went king to h8 he decided he doesn't want to give up the dark square bishop and i played knight to g4 now just put pressure on the h6 pawn twice and now he played knight captures on b3 a captures and king to h7 he defended it and here uh, I thought about trying somehow to exploit this. I'm already attacking h6 um, uh, twice, and I wanted to attack it the third time. If I play queen e3, he's just going to attack it with knight to d5. So I thought about queen to d2, but I, I couldn't um, uh, figure out how to continue after d captures on e5. Now, it's um, queen to d2 is actually the best move recommended by the engine, but after this move... Uh, I couldn't uh, find a good move for him, uh, uh, for for me, after knight captures on h6, of course. Okay, he's not going to capture here and allow knight to g5 check. But he can play f6, and now what is this? Uh, looks okay, but it doesn't look incredible. So, I don't know, that's why I didn't play it. I just improved my position with pawn to c4. Uh, and now, uh, frankly, I couldn't figure out uh, a way for him to get his pieces into the game or to do anything he played knight to d7 he founded this one plan that he can utilize i played h4 and he played pawn to f5 and i really didn't like this f5 move because i thought this can't be possible that he has uh that, that it's actually good for him to weaken his his pawns like this the g6 and e6 pawn and uh, i i didn't like it but i also didn't know what to play here uh, I mean, I knew what I wanted to play, I just didn't think it was good. That's why I spent some 25 minutes, maybe even half an hour, calculating this position. And uh, in the end, I played knight captures on h6, uh, sacrificing a piece. And now, the engine says that e captures on f6 au passant, uh, and knight captures on h6 are both equally fine. They're both 0.00, .00. only if you look at it, uh, let's say uh, we trade here, and captures, 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 and queen captures, uh, if I look at this, I've solved pretty much all of Black's developing problems. Black has the bishop pair. I mean, the, it's very, very easy to develop here. You can also develop the bishop, get the rook into the game. I don't know. I didn't uh, uh, like this for white at all. So I played knight captures on h6. And uh, this uh, does uh, require me to be down a material. But after uh, he, he took material and I played knight to g5, I'm sort of keeping his king on h6, I'm controlling these two squares, I'm also threatening knight captures on e6, and it's not that easy to defend. If he plays queen to e7, I can just capture. And now I'm attacking the uh, e6 pawn uh, twice with the knight and with the queen, and uh, once I capture and attack his rook, he's gonna attack me, but now queen to d2 check sidesteps the uh, the queen rook battery, and after he moves I have knight to c7, forking his rooks, uh, and so on. So I was very happy with that. So instead he didn't go for this, he went for knight to b6, now the bishop is guarding the pawn as well, and I played pawn to d5. Uh, and now, basically, I want him to uh, capture the pawn, and I want to advance the pawn to e6. This was my plan, and this uh, is best for him, he should allow this. And after, let's say, queen to f6, some c captures on d5, 
He's up uh, a piece, but I have uh, a defended pass pawn on e6. Uh, I have a monster knight on g5, so I'm I'm very happy with my counterplay here. But he played d captures on e5, and this is um, uh, not the best for him. I played d captures on e6, now threatening the queen. He played queen to f6, and now uh, I uh, get back into the game because, okay, he defended everything. He, of course, um, uh, w wants the capture on e6, but he now allowed c5. And around this point, he offered me a draw, uh, but I already, you know, I, I'm winning my piece back. I, I already cracked his king's armor. Uh, I don't want to draw here. Of course, I wanted to continue playing. So bishop captures on e6. I played c captures on b6. He played a captures on b6. If he plays c captures, he gives up the d6 square, which is pretty bad for him as I'm attacking it with the knight already. So he played a captures on b6 and I was uh, below five minutes on the clock here. So I had to play very quickly. I played rook 8 to c1. Uh, I put pressure on the c pawn. Uh, this, the idea being that if he advances it, I will get to the d6 square for my rook. So, of course, he doesn't. He plays rook to a to c8. And I played pawn to b, uh, b4, which uh, I frankly played because I did not have time on the clock. I wanted to gain additional 30 seconds to calculate the position. Uh, but queen to f3 was better right away. Uh, okay, it doesn't change drastically before uh, the, the position. Plus, also, it gets the pawn out of b3. Uh, but um, I uh, wanted to... Uh, like uh, I really just wanted to get more time. That's why I played it. And uh, if he goes for something like bishop to b3, I, I got rook d7, threatening checkmate. So it's not the best. Uh, so instead, he played rook f d8. He's playing every move, pretty much the only move he can in order to survive this. Every move is a top engine move for him. And I played queen to f3. I attacked the b7 pawn. And he doesn't want to give it up, but he should. He should just give it up, play queen to e7, and get back into the game. But he defended with pawn to e4, and now I play pawn to f4. I threaten uh, a nice discovery here while also threatening the c7 pawn. He went back, king to g7, and I played rook captures on c7. There is an even cooler way to play this, uh, but I did not have uh, nearly enough time uh, to calculate. Uh, that is pawn to h5. Looks really weird, uh, and it seems like it's doing nothing, but it's actually coming to h6, which you can't allow. And if you capture, then rook to c3 threatens to uh, bring the rook over to the g file. So I could have uh, played that. And even if you play something like rook to h8, uh, look at this, rook captures on c7, check now. And now after rook captures, knight captures, uh, now first h6 check. Now the king cannot capture, otherwise you go under the mask of the queen and then you just pick up everything. So rook will have to capture, but now you play knight captures, queen captures, and rook captures here. And you either get checkmated or you have to give up the queen. So there was a very nice way of actually winning this. Uh, but I was constantly playing an increment. I didn't have time for this. I was actually super happy that I was able to play rook captures on c7 here. Rook captures, queen captures, and now rook to e7. I played queen captures on b6 and he played bishop to f7 here. I remember thinking, uh, okay, uh, I, I was hoping he plays anything other than bishop to f7, because if he plays bishop to f7, I again uh, had um, to reevaluate everything because it's the strongest move. And while I still am objectively winning, uh, very little time on the clock, and I have to be very careful because the rook to d6 is the move I want to play, but then I allow his queen into uh, the attack. So I did play it, uh, rook to d6. He played queen captures on b2, and I played knight captures on f7. King captures and rook captures on g6. So I'm up a pawn and um, I have my queen and rook around his king. Should be should be okay, uh, but I, I have to survive the check. So he played queen a1 check. I played king h2. He played queen to e5 check. I played g3. And now he played pawn to f4. So now he wants to play f captures on uh, g3. And I play rook to g5. Uh, kicking his queen away. He throws in a nice vision so it's f captures on g3 check f captures and queen to f6 now i have to worry about a queen trade queen to f2 check uh, rook uh, pushing the pawn queen to uh, queen to b2 check so all of these are ideas i have to tackle with always having 30 seconds on the clock i play queen to c5 going after uh, rook to f5 to win his queen he played queen to e6 avoiding that and i played queen to e3 i knew okay maybe there are better moves but uh, i want to stop his pawn from advancing uh, i want to play something like h5 i want to play rook g6 uh, and then uh, improve my position as much as possible before deciding for something radical so he played king e8 uh, getting out of checks, and I played pawn to h5. He played rook to c7, now he wants to start checking my king. 
uh, and I played queen to f4, attacking his rook and also preparing rook to e5 to win his queen. And uh, if he goes for queen to a2 check, okay, he can start checking me, like I can go king h3, queen to e6 check, I can block, and if rook to c3 check, I can play king h4, and no more checks. He can pin my rook with a queen to e7, but it doesn't matter. I can even trade queens here, it's, it's going to be winning for me, I can go for the pawn here, uh, so it, it would be good. So he played rook to c2 check, he also uh, started getting very low on time here, and I played king to g1, I can play king to h1, if I play king h1 I allow queen to h3 with check and I just get checkmated. So I played king to g1 here, uh, and now he played queen to b6 check, and he played it very very strongly, uh, sort of to a signal maybe that he he's out of the woods, that maybe he's on the counter attack now, and uh, there is some uh, truth to it, uh, because if I, th there are three moves I can play here, there's king to f1, king to h1, and there's rook to c5, one is losing for me, one is a draw, one is winning for me. So if I play king f1, uh, and it seems like, okay, you're covering c1, there's uh, no danger here, There's uh, you're covering this with the rook, uh, there's actually queen a6 check, followed by queen to a1, and you just get destroyed here. So I can play king to f1. If I play rook c5, he just trades, and now it's a queen and pawn endgame. Uh, not really a lot, it comes with check, he's also going to take this pawn, so it's going to be a draw at best. So I played king to uh, h1, and now uh, he played queen captures on b4. There are no more checks here, and when I played king to h1, I uh, had maybe when, uh, oh, I had like 8 seconds on the clock when I played it, and I allowed a few more seconds to drop before I played it. I took a couple of deep breaths, uh, maybe like three of them, uh, because at, once I played king to h1, it was only here that I knew that I would win the game. Uh, so I, I felt very relaxed here. So uh, queen capture some b4 was played, and now uh, as he was out of checks, I started checking rook to g8 with check, king to d7, and now I played queen to f5 check, which uh, forces him to, any square he goes to is terrible, if he goes to dark squares, then I'm just gonna pick up his queen, so that's uh, out of the question. He played king to c7, I played queen to c8 with check, and he was in this position on move 46 that my opponent resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Once he moves, I'm gonna win his rook, and even though he can give one more check, that's all there is. Once he makes a move, um, uh, we can pretty much do anything, but uh, it's, uh, let's say, rook g6 check, king goes here, queen c5 check, rook king g8, and the rook to g8 will be checkmate. So, uh, you know, really weird game, uh, really difficult to play against Talyekin's defense. You've seen how many variations there are, and uh, you never know when to put the knight on e4, whether you can play it, should you play c4, should you tuck the bishop uh, back to c2, so many, so many, you know, yeah, weird lines, but uh, I'm happy with how it went, and uh, I'm happy that in this position where it really looked like, you know, yeah, you, you don't have a better move than... To, uh, uh, then to play uh, e captures on f6 al passant, uh, that I went for knight captures on h6. Looks tricky, but uh, you, you've seen how, I mean, with the undeveloped queen side, how much counterplay you have, and it was not easy for him to make moves uh, as well. Uh, but that's the problem, uh, you know, when analyzing with a computer. The computer will say e captures on f6, 0 0.00. Knight captures on h6, 0 0.00. Knight to h2, the engine gives 0 0.00. So, you know, it's like uh, uh, Anish said in that one interview, the position is either winning or it's not. If it's a draw, then it doesn't matter if it's plus one, plus two, plus three. It's either winning or it's not. Uh, so yeah, I'm very happy that I went for the complicated variation and I was able to get a more complicated game and in the end uh, even win this very nice classical game. Uh, so yeah, uh, it seems that all that rapid I've been playing uh, the, for this past week on the channel uh, paid off. Uh, you know, I was able to flush out all of my bad moves, even though I could have gone uh, better uh, a few times in this game, I'm overall I'm very happy with how it went and that I wasn't uh, losing at any point or making uh, or, or, or uh, uh, that I haven't made some sort of a huge blunder that could undermine my progress that I've made. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I uh, hope I, uh, uh, I, th I think my next game is like in two weeks, so hopefully I will be able to cover that one as well. Uh, looking, looking very much forward to playing and covering it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Audrius, and I would like to thank Mr. Hoodie Guy, the Buddhists on Spotify, uh, Peter Marinov, and an anonymous person for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day, and hope you will have a better time uh, dealing with Aliyahin's defense uh, after seeing this video. Uh, see you soon.